Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinker with Tools. Tonight we are going to be talking about that brand new rigid high torque hammer drill. So let's get into it on Tinker with Tools. So up until recently over at Rigid, the highest torque hammer drill that you could buy was roughly 800 inch pounds of torque and their brushless hammer drill. It's model number RB86115. That one was their current most powerful hammer drill until they announced this, which is the R861152. And this one comes in with 1250 inch pounds. So Rigid kind of has a history of being a little bit up and down in terms of what their current top tier offerings are. Previously, they had the Gen 5X, and the Gen 5X hammer drill offered roughly 780 inch-pounds of torque. They then came out with the Octane model. It went all the way up to 1,300 inch-pounds of torque. They then came back down to the Rigid Brushless line. That one offered 800 inch-pounds of torque. And now, like I said with this one, we're going back up to 1,250 inch-pounds. That puts it right in line with the 1,200 inch-pounds that we're getting out of this Milwaukee Gen 3 hammer drill. So how will these two compare together? On paper, it makes sense that the Rigid would outperform the Milwaukee just by a little bit. And the Milwaukee Gen 3 has been out for a long time. It's since been replaced by the Gen 4, which boasts bigger power numbers than that. So we're gonna compare these on two different batteries. We're first gonna look how they compare on four amp hour batteries. And then we're gonna go up to the six amp hours that both companies offer and see if the performance is different on there. So let's get over to the testing, but first some specs on each of these drills. All right, so for the testing today, as I mentioned, we are going to be doing the RB861152 from Rigid. We are going to be doing this on the max output 4 amp hour battery first versus the 4 amp hour battery from Milwaukee. Now, these drills are actually fairly similar in age. Recently, I had my Gen 3 replaced via warranty claim. And so this has actually got roughly the same age on it that this drill has. Okay, first with the 4 amp hour, we are going to be just driving a three and one eighths inch GRK. And we are in speed two on drill mode. All right, and now with the Milwaukee, we are in speed two in drill mode. This is gonna be a four inch GRK. Slipped off at the end, but not before driving it all the way down. All right, and now a five inch power lag, first with the rigid. And now with the Milwaukee. That was the first test that I felt like there was a, a difference between the two. It almost felt like the Milwaukee was a little bit slower. Now, as far as the battery comparison, not every test will be run on both batteries. We are just going to do some of the more demanding tasks. So we are gonna do both of the timber locks with the four and the six amp hour battery so we can compare times there and we'll show that on the screen. And then when we get to some of the bigger drilling tests, we'll do the same as well. Six inch timber lock with the rigid. <laughs> All right, and now the Milwaukee. I can already tell you that as far as me being able to determine which one of these drills is better, unless one just starts failing on one of these tests, it's going to be difficult to discern which one is better. Eight inch timber lock. Okay, on speed two, we are getting a cutout with the four amp hour battery. I'm gonna leave that proud in case we get the same result with the Milwaukee, we can compare the two. So in speed two on the four amp hour battery, the Milwaukee was able to do it, although I would argue slower than what the Rigid had been going, but the Rigid failed. Let's go ahead and switch over to the six amp hours and see if we get different results. With the six amp hour battery, let's go ahead and see what the results are. Now that felt very quick with the Gen 3 on the six amp hour high output. Rigid took that one. It'll be interesting to see the times of the four versus the six. First with the rigid, the eight inch. So there is a difference between the four and the six. So both of them were able to do it on the six. The Milwaukee was able to do it on the four. We'll go ahead and get some drilling tests done. We'll, like I said, we'll test both batteries over there and we'll see what the results are. So now we're gonna be doing the rigid with the one inch speed demon, going through standard two by material. Ah! 
Okay, so the hang up there on the end is when that back material kind of breaks away. It does sometimes bind up. This drill does now have an anti-kickback control, so it's possible we're gonna start seeing that. We are gonna grab the, the auxiliary handles and put those on here and give it one more test just to see if that had anything to do with it. All right, so test number two. So we are getting that same bind up on the back end. It's essentially through. Let's go ahead and do the Milwaukee and see if we get similar results on that one. So Milwaukee powers through, arguably a little bit slower, but it was able to do it without stalling. We're gonna see if it stalls on the spider spade bit. This is now an inch and a quarter. Okay, so it might've just been something to do with that spot of wood. It does go through in speed two with the lower amp hour battery, so that is a good sign. Punch right through. I think the rigid's a little bit quicker. And now the inch and a half on the four amp hour battery. We're gonna call that through. It did get bound up at the end, but there is a complete hole there. It did punch through, um, just like the rigid. On these four amp hour batteries, we will try the inch and three quarter Irwin bit. It is tapping out very early on with that. Obviously it'll be able to do it in speed one, but for sake of these tests, let's go ahead and try it in speed two on the four amp hour with the Milwaukee. All right, so the Milwaukee did go further, but not all the way. So let's move up to the six amp hour and see if we get different results. All right, and now with the six amp hour in the rigid. So it took a couple of pulls. On that first pull, I would say it roughly got as far as the Milwaukee did on the four amp hour battery. So definitely an improvement on the six amp hour battery. Let's see what the Milwaukee does on the six. and Milwaukee goes right through with the six. Now the biggest test of all, we are only doing this on the six in speed two to start. This is the two and nine sixteenth switchblade. So almost an instantaneous cutout. Let's go ahead and try it on the Milwaukee. I'll give my final impressions over at the table and we'll talk about which one of these drills comes out on top. So let's talk about some conclusions. I'll show you the times on the screen, how they compare. You'll know those answers while I don't. So my opinion is purely coming fresh off that testing of which one of these drills is more powerful. And in terms of torqueier applications, the Milwaukee comes out on top. I mean, it is a torqueier drill. It does beat the rigid brushless, the model number 115. It does beat that drill each and every day. It is a better, more powerful drill, but it does still fall short of the Gen 3, which then I also feel like it's going to fall short of obviously the Gen 4 and a couple others. It puts it kind of in that second tier of powerful hammer drill. It's not going to be in the top leading class. We saw it tap out earlier, both in driving and drilling test, when the bits got bigger or the, the screws got longer. It tapped out with the eight inch timber lock in speed two on the four amp hour battery, although it was able to do it in the six amp hour battery. We saw it tap out earlier on the two and nine sixteenths and the inch and three fourths bits. And then the six amp hour improved performance a little bit but the Milwaukee was able to do that two and nine sixteenths in speed two on its six amp hour battery. It just went right through it. This one had to drop down to speed one. With some of the smaller fasteners, this felt faster. The Milwaukee Gen 3 is considered a premium drill, whereas this is kind of in your more prosumer category, if you will. And so I do expect that the Milwaukee will beat this drill. I think this platform makes a lot of sense for people who want some of the power, some of the bigger brands, but they want to be able to get into it at a lower price. The problem with that is Ridge's prices have been steadily climbing on their tools. And so unless you're buying some of their tool sales, you're not necessarily getting that big of a discount on it. So you're really just banking on that lifetime service agreement is the differentiating factor. I do think there's value in the rigid line. I think it's a good tool. I think this is a good step in the right direction, but is it going to topple the Kings of the industry in terms of power and performance? No, it's not. It just becomes more competitive and competition is a good thing for us all. And so having Rigid offer a good hammer drill makes me wonder what we're going to see in the future from them. If you already have the 800 inch pound Rigid brushless hammer drill, 
this is a step up. I think it's a worthy recommendation to go out and get it if you're on that rigid platform. Uh, should you go to the rigid platform just for this drill thinking it's going to beat out others? No, I don't think that's the case. So if you have any questions or comments about this hammer drill, go ahead and leave it down below. Tell me what you think about it. And if you don't like it, what are you running instead? If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you want to see more content from Tinker with Tools, make sure to hit the subscribe button and check the bell notification icon so you can get notified when I upload new content. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time on Tinker with Tools. Mm -hmm.